Hi, I'm Maureen from the DIY website madebymarzipan.com, and today I'd like to teach you the fundamentals of one of my favorite hobbies, hand lettering. Hand lettering is the art of drawing words to create an original piece, and it can be a beautiful way to express yourself. Before we get started, there's one point I'd like to emphasize. Your finished piece doesn't need to be perfect. If that were the goal, you could just type and print out your message instead. Rather, we're creating a unique piece of art, and minor flaws can actually enhance the handmade vibe. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just relax and enjoy the process. Let's take a look at drawing tools. I strongly prefer to use a mechanical pencil when sketching my designs. The fine lead allows for precise lines and I never have to stop to sharpen my pencil. My favorite pencil is Sucra's Sumo Grip. It has a wide cushion shaft that's comfortable to use and the feature I love most, an extendable eraser. You'll also need a large high quality eraser. I use several different brands. As long as you choose an artist grade eraser made for your pencil type, it should be fine. When it comes to pens, I use Pigma Micron almost exclusively. I should disclose that I do a lot of freelance work for Sucur of America, who manufactures these pens. However, Microns are my personal preference for several reasons. First, I can trust them. When you've spent hours sketching a piece and it's time to ink, it's so important that you know your ink won't splatter or smear. Secondly, these pens are consistent. They draw smooth, steady lines with reliable ink flow. The nibs are durable and have a very long life as long as they're kept when not in use. And the ink is archival quality, so it won't fade over time. The number on the pen corresponds with the nib size. The larger the number, the bigger the nib. If you're just starting out and only buy one single pen, I recommend buying a Black 05, which has a 0.45 millimeter nib. You'll need a transparent ruler. I actually buy these in packs of three from the dollar store. There's no need to spend a lot of money on a ruler, just make sure you choose one that you can see through. I like to add a tab made of tape to one end as it gives me an easy way to lift the ruler from the paper without having to slide it across wet ink. Let's talk about paper. While you can practice on any kind of paper, the type of paper you choose will affect the appearance and quality of your finished piece. For example, you wouldn't want to invest a lot of time on a piece drawn on notebook paper because the lines would be a distraction. Printer paper may cause your ink to bleed or feather and it will discolor over time. The very best paper I found for lettering is Bristol paper made by Strathmore. This paper is incredibly smooth without being glossy. Its heavy weight holds up well to erasing and won't crumple. Bristol paper is acid free, so your artwork will last for a long time. Some people like to draw at an angle, placing a slanted binder beneath their work. However, I'm more comfortable working on a flat table. Guidelines can assist you in creating balanced uniform letters. I like to draw a cap height guideline, which the capital letters and ascenders will touch, as well as a baseline where the letters will sit. You can add other guidelines as needed, such as an X height guideline where the top of lowercase letters will touch. You may also wish to draw a descender guideline where descending tails will touch. We'll begin by practicing one of the easiest letters, T. As I work, I'll refer to different elements of the letters. I don't have enough time to cover all of the terminology in this video, but I've created a free PDF for you to print as a reference. I started with a simple sans serif block letter now let's try one with decorative serifs. I've had to speed up the footage so I can cover more information, but go ahead and take your time. Remember, you're not writing letters, you're sketching them. Next, let's try rounding off the terminals. I'm giving this one slab serifs. As you draw, pay attention to keeping your wits consistent. You can also try rounding off the serifs or drawing ball serifs. Try a curvy brush or script style letter. If you're looking for ideas for lettering styles, one of my favorite sites is myfonts.com. These are mostly designer fonts you have to pay to download. However, there's no need to download them since we're only using them as an inspirational starting point for our drawings. 
If you register for an account, you can create albums to save your favorite fonts to reference later. This final T will feature splayed terminals. Once your letter is sketched, it's time to ink it. Go over your pencil lines with a pen, using the ruler as needed. You can add further character to your letters by adding embellishments. You can turn block lettering into prism style lettering. I have a tutorial on my website that covers this technique in depth. You could also add dots or draw inline. Consider adding shadows or filling with a pattern or solid color. Now that we've practiced some different styles with an easy letter, I'm going to share a few tips for the trickier letters. For letters with multiple stems like N, M, and H, I like to start by drawing all the stems first. To draw the connecting leg on the N, draw a line from the top right corner to the bottom right corner on the opposite stem. Then draw a line from the top left corner to the bottom left corner. When it comes to the letter O, I draw short lines for the right and left sides. Then I connect these with curves at the top and bottom. I don't, 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 don't feel afraid to innovate. Don't, 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 don't miss a chance to be creative. Don't, 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 why don't I try this at home? Try this at home. I think that S is the most difficult letter. I found it's easiest to draw two short lines, one near the top and one near the bottom. Repeat on the right side. Turn those lines into curves. Sketch out the correlating line. Then connect the top and bottom lines with a curve in the middle. Finally, let's try an E. I like to draw a rectangle for this, then draw the top and bottom arms to extend the width of the rectangle. Then center the middle arm in the space between. Shorten the middle arm by about one third. There are a few key elements to consider when designing a hand lettered layout. First, your lettering must be legible. English is read from left to right and top to bottom, so make sure that your words are written in this order. This first sketch doesn't work because it reads Always Good Night Kiss Me. This second sketch reads Always Kiss Me Good Night, which is what we want. Secondly, try to emphasize the most important words by adjusting sizing, spacing, and placement. The first sketch emphasizes the word my, which looks strange. In the second sketch, the words you and everything take center stage while the words are my serve as accents. Third, try to achieve balance in your design. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, but it shouldn't feel lopsided. This first sketch is heavily weighted on the right, while the second sketch distributes the elements more evenly. Fourth, the mood of your piece should reflect the context of the words. Consider the lettering style and perhaps the shape of your canvas. This first lettering sketch features a cute script font, which doesn't reflect the mood of the words. Widely spaced, all caps letters do a better job of mirroring the message. Make a few thumbnail sketches to give yourself a starting point. I'm going to letter the words Get Lost and Find Yourself. At first I thought a bear might be cool, but then I realized I wouldn't want to run into a bear while lost. So instead I'm opting for a tree design. Now we can start sketching our design. I think a hexagon would make a cool frame. I'm making each side 3 and 3 quarter inches long. Then I'm adding a triangle in the center. Turn it into a pine tree by sketching points for branches. I often start my designs in the center of the canvas, but I think it will be easiest to start at the bottom when working with a triangle. 
Find the center point of the word you're writing and draw the letters outward from that point to make sure your word is balanced. Draw guidelines and use your ruler as needed. Now I'm going to move to the top so it will be easier to center the remaining words in the middle. I'm drawing a cursive script for this. Sometimes I like to wait to finish off the descenders until I see whether there's a way to utilize them to enhance the design. Don't hesitate to turn your paper if it gives you a better angle for drawing. As I'm drawing the word lost, I realized that the O could pull double duty as a compass, which would contribute to the mood of the piece. During the sketching stage, everything is very fluid for me. Don't be afraid to make changes and deviate from your thumbnail sketch as the design comes together. I love to replace the word and with an ampersand. There are endless style variations and it can be a beautiful design element. bothered by this white space, so I'm going to lengthen some of these letters to balance it out. Since I did that to the word yourself, I'm going to mirror it in the word lost. Now let's do a quick check of our four key elements. First, it's legible and reads clearly. Did I emphasize important words? I wanted the words get and and to take up the least amount of space, so I'm happy with that. Is it balanced? There's a bit too much space at top and not quite enough at bottom, so I'm going to make some minor adjustments. Does the mood reflect the context? 
I think we've done a pretty good job of that, but a couple more pine trees in the background could add to the overall effect. Once you're happy with your design, it's time to ink it. Slowly trace your design with the pen. Take it slow and don't hesitate to stop and turn the paper if it gives you a better angle for tracing. I'm giving my letters a distressed finish by stippling some areas. After you've traced your design, wait a minute or so to ensure the ink is completely set. Then erase your pencil marks. Check your overall design and see whether it's missing anything. Sometimes filling in the background can make your piece pop. You can use a regular marker for this since you've already erased your pencil marks. You may want to add shadows or maybe embellishments. I have a video on my website specifically about hand lettering accents if you'd like more ideas. This piece is finished. If you'd like, you can visit my website, madebymarzipan.com, to see my entire hand lettering gallery and more lettering videos. A big thank you to StrathmoreArtist.com for sponsoring this series, and to SakuraofAmerica.com for keeping me well-stocked in pens. Try this at home.